What's going on, church? So glad you decided to join us today for this daily devotional. I've been missing you guys, missing spending time with you, missing sharing God's word with you. So I'm glad you decided to join us today. Man, we've been in this series called Live Differently. We've been taking a look at the word of God, a lot of this 1 Corinthians 13 chapter and what love is, what God truly invented love to be, because that truly is what causes us to live differently. You know, the love of God, we're introduced to the love of Jesus, man, it causes us to live differently, to think differently, to prioritize things differently. It causes us to be a different people. So today we're jumping in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 6. It says, it does not rejoice. They're talking about love here. It does not rejoice about injustice. Some translations say evil, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. We rejoice whenever the truth wins out. We are a people of truth. You know, are we get our truth from the word of God. We have all that we need to build our lives on, to walk our lives on, to structure our lives on out of this truth. We find true freedom in this truth. And man, it is no uh, news to anybody that we are living in a time where people are not a big fan of that word truth at times. We live in a, a time where truth has become a trigger word. Uh, we live in a time where people want to create their own truth. You know, whatever my truth is, that is truth. Or whatever your truth is, that is truth. And, you know, in theory, this is actually sounds kind of cool. You know, if to me, I've got a little hippie in me. I kind of like this idea, you know. It's all good, man. Just do whatever you want to do. And it sounds good in theory, but, man, I've come to find that it's truly a very slippery slope. You know, I uh, was sitting down with having dinner with somebody that was from out of town. They come in to share God's word with some people. And, and uh, he, I was cracked a joke about how every time he comes in town, he probably needs to loosen his belt a couple, uh, a couple spaces. And, you know, in Louisiana, we love to eat. So we were eating and he, I cracked that joke and he looked at me and laughed. He said, not anymore. And he showed me his belt. And this man had a belt that stretches on. And it really just blew my mind because it kind of is counterproductive. You know, the belt is to let you know where you're at. It's meant to give you structure, to keep your pants where they're at. But when you've got a belt that gives and stretches, depending upon how you're feeling and how you're doing and what your day looks like, how many know it doesn't, pro doesn't provide much truth? It doesn't provide much uh, structure. You know, we live in a time where, man, people... They would, rather lo they would rather live a slow death of disease and depression to have their feelings hurt. Man, we live in a time where, man, this is my truth and don't say anything that contradicts my truth because it's going to hurt my feelings. But if the truth is, if you want to follow Jesus, you're going to get your feelings hurt. Honestly, following Jesus is an invitation to having your feelings hurt. But see, we've kind of that through that teaching, through the truth that Jesus gives us is where we grow the most, is where we find the most freedom. You know, the Bible says that truth shall set you free. But we live in a time and place where, man, people, they want, there's even churches in our community where that church is, you come on a Sunday and it doesn't matter what your truth is or what God you say you serve, it's all truth here and you're just welcome here. And you know, that sounds great and all, but the thing about having a God that agrees with everything that you agree with is number one, it doesn't sound like a God. It sounds more like an idealized version of yourself. And then two is that when you have a God who agrees with everything you agree with, that also means that you've made yourself God. And when you make yourself God, that also means that you need to make yourself savior. You need to make yourself your own protector. You need to make yourself your own provider. And you see, our souls were never created to carry that weight. We were created in the garden to be in communion with God to be sons and daughters of the Most High, to be protected by Him, to be provided for by Him, and to be saved by Him. So we must stick to this truth. You know, we must stick to the truth. We rejoice when the truth runs out. We rejoice when the truth sets people free. And there is freedom in the truth. You know, we live in a time where we want to just be free and you do everything. Freedom is, is the absence of structure, right? And honestly, it's the presence of structure. Now, we find the most freedom when we live within God's truth. We live within his structure, just like a vine that grows up a wall. It needs that structure and that lattice to provide it support and to create an environment in which it grows. That is where we grow the most, within God's truth. So what do we do with that truth? If this truth is what sets people free, if we rejoice when this truth wins, if we don't rejoice when evil wins or injustice wins, so what do we do with this truth? And truly, I think it's so easy for us to go stand on a corner and just tell people this is the truth and you're not walking in the truth. But Jesus does something different. 
See, I've come to find out that most people truly are doing the best that they possibly can with what they've been given. They're doing the best that they can with the truth they've been given, the truth that they've been taught, the truth that they saw in their home growing up. But instead of Jesus, Jesus never comes and preaches at people about the truth. He sits down with them. You know, one of my favorite statistics is not about how many times Jesus heals people. It's not about how many messages he preaches, but it's how many times we see him sitting down with people, having a meal, breaking bread. And I think Jesus gives us the best example of how to love and how to share the truth with people, how to love in truth, how to share truth in love. And that is through sitting down with people. Man, nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. And we see Jesus create emotional uh, relational equity with people, and then he begins to just walk out his truth. He lets his truth shine within. He lets people see the, the, the benefits and the pros of his truth and let that shine louder than his words ever can. And man, this is what we're called to do. We're called to sit with people. And I pray as you're watching today that God brings people in your mind, in your mind's eye that you need to sit down with. Maybe it's people that you've tried to share the truth with before and it's offended them. But maybe God's calling you now to go about and do it Jesus' way, to share that truth and love, to sit down with that person. Maybe it's a wayward child, maybe that's living in a homosexual lifestyle or a lifestyle that you haven't agreed with and you've over and over tried to tell the truth and be, share the truth with them only to push them further and further away. Well, I believe that God wants to give you an opportunity today to share that truth and love, to open that door back up, to sit down with that person and just love them where they're at and let them see that truth live with inside of you. And man, wait till God gives you the time and he opens the door for you to share that truth. And man, when God's anointing is on it, when his timing is on it, and when his supernatural love is on it, that is the truth that sets people free. When we share truth in love, let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for today. We thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you for your truth, Lord that you've given us your truth. You loved us too much to let us just live here going about our own way, Lord, but you've brought us truth because in your truth we find freedom. In your truth we find life. We find peace. And Lord, we find purpose. So I pray for those watching today, Lord, that you just remind them of your truth, Lord. Let us not live in a way, Lord, that we run away from conflict or from things that don't agree with us. Lord, let us lean into your word, Lord. Search us, O oh God, and show us if there's anything in our heart and our lives that does not please you today. And Lord, let us correct that, Lord, but also give us an anointing to sit down with people and share truth and your love with them. We love you, and we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Hope you guys have a great day. Thank you.